Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're doing an unboxing of the Keychron V1. Now this is a budget QMK via keyboard. It is not gasket mounted, mind you, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. And I'll tell you why as we get into this. Now, I was not originally going to buy this board, but then I saw a video on YouTube by a particularly loud reviewer i'm sure some of you might know who i'm talking about and it was complete cringe um he was knocking this keyboard so badly that i was like i've got to buy it now <clears throat> just to be completely transparent i have my issues with the keychron i have had issues with them in the past and their support they do have they do appear to have gotten better that said, they have a Linux support group because I use Linux as my primary OS and it's only on Facebook. It's on all their cards. If you own a Keychron board, you'll see. And I'm banned out of that group because I asked for help. <laughs> so that's neither here nor there. That said, I've gotten my complaints. I mean, and I'm still searching for a good ACO board, honestly, because so far I've gone through two, the 3084 and uh, 5075 and both were they just weren't worth the money now this one i did pick up from amazon but i i was able to get a discount at the price they're going to be selling it for on divinity key because uh the bare bone right now is 79 dollars on amazon um, and it's going to be 59 or 54 dollars 54 or 59 dollars um on Divinity Key when they get stock here in the next week or two. So I would hold off um, if you're gonna be purchasing this board as you'll be able to get a little bit cheaper. And especially if you throw in, I think they have free shipping over hundred. Don't quote me on that though, but you're gonna get much uh, better shipping than Keychron directly um, if you're in the US. So um, that said, it is available now on Amazon. Although when I got there, the only one that was available was the transparent black. There's none available now, so they've sold out pretty quick. So this keyboard already seems like it's going to be hot. Now, for those that don't know, this is a plastic version of this keyboard right here. I mean, you can see this is the Keychron Q1. Now, <clears throat> this does require some modding out of the box in order to get rid of some ping that it has but once you mod this thing it sounds good now I'm still I'm not fully done modding my Q1 yet because of issues I had with Q1 plates but that's neither here nor there this this keyboard sells for 159 barebone um, I think 179 or 199 with uh, switches and keys so and now this is a very substantial port I have the Akko Oh, uh, 007 V1 and it weighs about half as much as this so uh, they do deliver some substantial keyboards and I actually like their design on how to open them as well which we'll get into because I'm going to open this puppy up so anyway I wanted to keep this one here at, at an arm's length just in case we want to do any comparison so let's go ahead and get into the what everybody here came to see as always, we've got you know, a little bit of foam. This this is not PE foam. This is not the type of foam that you use on top of the PCB. This is too thick. Um, just somebody had asked me a question about that before. And I'm gonna set this aside for a second. Now we have the quick start guide. And it has, you know, not happy support. See, they've even changed it. It no longer includes that Facebook group. So like I said, I think they're they're making changes for the better. So I commend them for that. Um, and I don't know, I I don't tend to hold a grudge against the company. I, I don't know what that video is all about. But so you got your nice little manual uh, instructions and how to insert the switches in correctly, and then it's just a quick start guide. It's a handy guide to the 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 pro you know the way that it's programmed out of the box. Now being that it's QMK via. If you're not familiar, QMK is a firmware 
that works seamlessly across keyboards that are compatible with it. Via is a layer on top of QMK. QMK requires a configuration file, which for some can be a little daunting. Via has a full um, interface. Now, there are third-party programs that allow you to kind of point and click and create a QMK, uh, QMK configuration file. I assume most people will probably just use VIA, but this having key, having QMK and VIA out of the box is great. One caveat, QMK is an open source project, which um, I have much love for, but it, there is only one maintainer that's checking in keyboards. His queue is over a hundred keyboards long. So this one isn't even in the source code yet. So right now I'm gonna assume unless Keychron is going to release their own branch, which I haven't seen, that VIA is really the only thing we're going to be able to use on this keyboard. I could be mistaken, but we've got a nice, they always do include nicely braided. I like the braided USB-C cables, um, though it does have, it's USB-C to USB-C with an adapter. I mean, what would it have cost them to just add a little, you know, tag there so it doesn't get lost, but whatever. That's, that's not a big deal. Um, we've got a keycap pour. We've got, oh, a couple extra screws. Looks like for the plate and for the case. Nice. And then we've got the Allen wrench and just a regular screwdriver for these screws, as well as one of these, which, yay. Anyway, all right. Oh, that's not the one that goes I'm like adding extra stuff in here. But now let's get to the meat of what we're here for. And this is the Keychron V1. Now, like I said, this one's the transparent black version. But as we can see, the lines on this keyboard are almost extremely, I mean, they're, maybe it's just because it's a different color, but the blue or the metal one seems a little bit bigger, but um, I think it just might be just my eyes. I think they're the exact same size. I'd be surprised if the PCB was different. Um, I'm not gonna open both of them though. So off the bat, you know, we've got our wheel, which is clickable. You've got a nice, uh, looks like a waffle silicone down there at the bottom. And you've got your doubled, double feet for a total of three different typing angles. And then, of course, because it's Keychron, you've got your Mac and Windows modes. It basically just switches um, these two keys around for uh, control and uh, command. Now, the lubes do come uh, stable. Uh, the stabilizers, the lubes, the stabilizers do come nicely lubed. Although, I mean, it's just a glop on there. Uh, I don't think it's uh, really going to make much of a difference. But let's go ahead and open her up real quick. And then we'll uh, slap some switches and keys on here and see what she sounds like. How about we just go ahead and do a stock sound test before we open her up? Because there's a lot of things that I want to do to this keyboard. That sounded wrong. There's a lot of things I'd like to try on this keyboard. <laughs> so, but let's go ahead and see what she sounds like stock because I'm sure once I open her up, I'm going to want to start tape modding and, and doing that kind of stuff. So let, let's let see what's, what would be some good switches to put in here that I haven't tried. Now I know I have been, uh, huh? I could do these, but part of me kind of just wants to use some that everyone might find familiar and might know. That way the sound test will at least be something that people can have a reference point from. How about some Aqua Ocean Blues? All right, that sounds good. Let's put a little tactility in this board. So let's go ahead and load her up. It looks nice loaded up with switches I, I i gotta say i'm actually i'm not usually fond of these translucent boards but because this one is so dark it's almost 
completely see-through, I mean, almost completely opaque. I actually kind of like it. Now, let me go ahead and pick some switches. Um, I will be back because I don't know what switches to put on this. All right, so I got these keycaps the other day. Actually, completely forgot about ordering them. Primnesia is real. Um, they're basically, they're a CSA profile. I don't think they have a brand. Um, it, it just says this, but it's kind of like a samurai, like the original samurai with the orange lettering, even though the colors are a bit off. I don't know, I got it. Why not go ahead and just pop it on? Oh, just real quick, these are double shot. And since, oh, I know I've got it around here somewhere. Why not just measure so that we have all of the, the data available to us i'd like to know what we're dealing with let's go ahead and zero you out these actually feel pretty thick oh yeah 1.84 1.85 so yeah these are like one seven eighths uh of a millimeter oh, one and a half all right so sidewalls or no front no that's what the sidewalls sidewalls do seem to be a bit thicker not like one and a quarter and then Sidewalls are like one and a half. Oh, no. Guess when you grab it. Yeah, about one and a half. So these are actually some uh, decent caps. I mean, they are double shot. You can see the orange in there, and um, they feel they feel nice. I want to say they're PVT. Here she is, all keyed up. I must say, I actually like this keycap set. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it or not, but it looks nice. Now let's see what we've got when we plug in. We are already in Mac mode. Let's go to Windows mode, even though we're on Linux. And there we go. Obviously the lights aren't gonna shine through all that much because we don't have shine through keycaps, but we do have south facing LEDs, which I know for a lot of people, that's important. Although, like I said, I don't believe interference to be that much of an issue nowadays. I think most switches have modified their molding. Um, and if you are using an older switch, all you have to do is take a tiny piece of paper, stick it inside the stem hole, and that's gonna buy you that millimeter. That's all you need, millimeter, and that will remove any north facing interference. But, Let's go ahead and do a sound test and see what she sounds like before we get any further into modding her and, you know, modifying what she's going to sound, what this kit is going to sound like.
Well, I don't know about you, but for me, I thought this was a pretty decent sound test. Obviously, the stabilizers need some work. That's a given. But I was surprised at the uniformity of the sound across the keys when I do the uh, multiple keys and go up and down. There seemed to be a lot more uniformity going up and down the rows, and that's usually reserved for gasket mounted kits. Now we know that this is a tray mount or top mount. So how is that uniformity there? So far I am seeing, I mean, cause like I said, this is gonna be available. It's available right now from Keychron Barebone for, I, want, I just keep wanting to say 54, it may be 54 or 59, I apologize. But they add 28, $30 shipping. Divinity Key, who is their official U.S. vendor, will have them in stock at um, MSRP. So I would hold off, unless you really got to have it, but now Amazon's out of stock. And the reason that Amazon has it listed as a higher price is so that Keychron can make up for all the fees that Amazon charges for storing and shipping, all of that. If you've ever sold with Amazon, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, but first impressions. I have many 75% kits, budget kits. Thus far, even though the right, because the thing is I have many, the TH-80, the Fecker IK-75, um, I could name a lot of them off, but even though they call themselves gasket mount, they're more of a sandwich mount that has no room for the gaskets to flex. So despite the fact that yes, they do have a gasket, a gasket is useless if it cannot flex because then you don't get the flex and you don't get that sound uniformity because all, you know, the entire plate can vibrate at the same resonance. This is a tray mount though it achieves that. And all right, let's say 59. I, I, I think it's 54 though, but initial impressions and knowing that I am, I'm not a corporate fan. I don't go for corporations. I'm a consumer. I might like one product from this brand, but not like the rest because of particular reasons. But I do my best to at least, if I don't like you know a particular company, it's because of valid reasons. So again, I am not a lover of Keychron. I'm not a lover of any corporation, but the value you're getting for this, it's insane. I mean, there's just, this has just changed the world of budget keyboards because not only is this below $60, bare bone it is a knob 75 percent which like it or not they're currently about the most popular keyboard in the hobby at least in the budget to mid-range hobby people love this layout and why not it's a great layout i like it i'm a tkl guy myself but i can use a 75 i could use a 65 percent but 75 percent with knob it's nice if i'm doing video editing via switch to a layer then i can use this for scrubbing up and down my timeline um you know doing cuts for the press whatever there's so many things that i can do but this has qmk via out of the box show me another keyboard even a 60 percent that comes ready to go bare i mean bare bone you know that you don't have to put together that has qmk via out of the box for less than 60 dollars there isn't for someone entering the hobby or someone already in the hobby, this seems to be a great kit. I just, I mean, like I said, we just did the stock sound test. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect. There's some more that needs to be done. But if I was just starting out and say, hey, I just want to know what a mechanical keyboard's like later on, I'm going to get into modding. I don't think anybody's going to be like, oh, this is awful because it's, yes, it's the switches I used are stock. Sorry, I stopped the video. That was an accident. Um, yes, you know, the switches I used are stock, so it's a little, a little bit scratchy, and the stabilizers are not um, properly lubed. But as I don't get flex from these other 75% kits, um, I'm not really missing anything here. So this was quick. I I do have. Budget Keeves is about to hit 10,000 members. 
If you're a member of Budget Keebs, thank you. If you don't know what Budget Keebs is, go to reddit.com forward slash r forward slash Budget Keebs, one word. We're a welcoming community. We've grown very quickly over the last year. We're about to hit 10,000 members this weekend, and we're going to have some giveaways. So I have to go and prepare for that. I am going to come back to this board. We're going to open her up. We're going to do a Tempest mod, PE foam mod. We're going to um, do the stabilizers, and we're going to tune this baby up to make her sound like two to three times what I paid for her or what the retail is or even more it's going to sound like a good keyboard I can already tell this is good construction quality um I I, I can't find complaints I do know that when I saw the video but I'm not sure if all the uh if it's only that some studs have the middle inserts or all of them do um but I'm hoping that the ones you know inside I think the ones on the inside don't but if we're only going to be taking the plate out once, then we should be okay as long as we're careful with the threading. So my initial impression of the Keychron V1 is that this is a damn good value for the money. And I am not a corporate show. I just, I just call it as it is. And that other video, I don't get it. I mean, I don't know what was going on. Um, I know that they claimed they didn't have enough time or whatever, but... I'll always remain a consumer reviewer. I'm, I will, uh, my money's always in the game. So if I spent money on something that I don't feel is worthwhile, I'm going to say it. Um, but I'm going to be as neutral about it as possible because I don't hate companies. I mean, I don't like companies that have bad ethics. That's just, but I just won't do business with them. But I don't have the energy to hate anyone or anything, especially a company. It's just a group of people. Anyway, Keychron's doing some pretty amazing things. They got an Alice board on the way. Um, they've come out with some really great kits. They're aluminum kits. I mean, their first versions, yes, there were some issues, but they have been improving their game. I am consistently impressed with their their entries. As is before, I was kind of just me. The last one of those being, uh, was it the K8 Pro? That light gasket mount. I was like, meh. But after that, they've been upping the game. The QCon, the Q1 V2 definitely made some changes, um, appreciable changes. But this one, the V1, I think this is going to be the budget king of the year. Even though it's coming out halfway through the year, I think that this keyboard, we're going to see this in a lot of people's collections coming up. Now, like I said, these are just thoughts off off the top of my head as I just opened this up and took a look at it and I was not expecting to like it but I can't find a reason to dislike it because like I said it yo it's not gasket mount well I've got plenty of gasket mount that just don't have flex and they don't have the uniformity so and I paid more I mean <laughs> um I think the only one that I paid less for than this would be the next time 75 when that first came out I think I got it for 30 seven and i got another one a yellow one because i want to do a really cute build for a friend um on prime day for 32. but that's if you know the nt75 that's a toy i mean it don't get me wrong it's a keyboard but it's very light not very substantial doesn't have any patterning requires a lot of work can sound very good but it's going to require some work with the Akko 5075 that i sent back i expected it to be pretty good out of the box i was completely unimpressed completely unimpressed and I'm still looking, so if you guys have any suggestions for Akko boards besides the 3084 and the 5075 that are actually a good price to value proposition, because that's my problem with the Akko boards, is there's just the, the proposition isn't, isn't balanced there. I feel like I'm paying more than what I'm getting. And yes, oh, I'm getting ASA caps. Oh no, but they're not quite the same double shot. They're half a millimeter thinner. They sound like your basic OEM key that comes on your $25, 60%. So that's not what I expect when I pay $110 for a keyboard because I could just go and buy one for $30. Anyway, I'm impressed with this. I'm going to come back to it. We've got a lot of things to do to this board. I'm, I bet I'm going to make it sound much better and I may actually uh, end up getting it in a different color too because I... I, I like it. Right now, this has become, in the little bit of time that I've had this keyboard today, has become my favorite 
Uh, and again, I am not a fan of Keychron. Or I've never been a big fan of Keychron. They're doing steps in the right direction. I appreciate that. But that has nothing to do with my opinion on this board. My opinion on this board is that the value this comes with, via, out of the box, um, south facing, I know that's not the biggest thing, but for some people it is important. Five pin hot swap compatibility, uh, the Windows and the Mac mode, the programmability through five. I mean, it's insane. The value out of the box for this board is insane. And even if you were to get it, you know, with the keys and the switches, um, it's still, I mean, you're, you're, I mean, the, the keycaps, mm, I don't, I don't think Keychron's got the keycap game down just yet, but even the switches alone, you're going to be getting a good deal and you can always take them out, you know, replace the caps or whatever, but, but a bare bone is what I would recommend because then you get to choose, but Brandon, I'm not everyone's like me. I've got a whole mess of switches to pick from at any time. As you saw, I just, Hey, let's go with Aqua Oceans, but if you're an, a new entrant into the hobby, I think you're going to like this board and it's going to be a great kit because you're still going to be able to learn from it. You still can mod it. But at the price that you're paying, I mean, it, it, I don't see the TH80, uh, the Fecker, um, these other plastic 75% kits being able to be sold now for more than this. Or, you know, I mean, I, I foresee in the next few weeks, AliExpress is going to be dumping a lot of those 75% boards for half the price. Because I think this is going to hurt their market share. Because this gives more for the money for less. That's just this is my opinion. Again, I've got a whole mess load of things to do, so I will come back. Just consider this part one of my V1 review. But so far, I like it. I think it's great. Should you buy it? That's your decision from what I do here and what I'll do in the further videos coming up. Hopefully you guys can learn and let's see where we go from there. Until then, I want to wish everyone a wonderful, peaceful, loving weekend. Keep calm, keyboard on.